had a couple of days off, just been um, looking at uh, YouTube videos myself, watching reviews, looking at buying a couple of items, and uh, just general researching. So anyway, this is the first sort of, yeah, so I bought my first knife this year. It was a, um, just a cheapie, a charade, is it a SH, SCH F37? It's a cheaper, sort of bush crusty, sort of, I don't know, is it a frontier knife? I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but a mate of mine, he's got one and he's he's got the slightly smaller version. Uh, he rates it, reckons it's a great beater. That's why I bought it. I bought it as a beater so I can uh, baton, you know, making the, the Fatwood Friday videos and just fires in general. Instead of beating on my good expensive stuff and having uh, pine resin and stuff all over them, I'll just have a cheaper one. And, you know, it's just something else to throw into the collection and do a little bit of a review, you know. Um, and what else did I get? After watching a few of the videos, I've seen everyone using these cheese gratery looking things for making tinder out of their fat wood. So I decided to uh, give one of those a go. I tried my cheese grater, or the Mrs. Cheese Grater, and no, it didn't work. Then, was it yesterday, Dean from Orion, he, um, he posted a video of him doing one, um, playing with it and seemed to work really good he seemed to be fairly impressed with it if it's good enough for Dean it's good enough for me so I just thought well hell I'll, I'll just jump on it so I had a look online there was a, a local bloke who who had them so I just grabbed one for the hell of it and also another recommendation from Dean was these clipper clipper lighters sort of seen them didn't know anything about them but once I've seen that they're refillable they're basically disposable. They're cheaper than the Bic. I've always had Bic, so I thought they were quite good. They've always been reliable. But I thought I'd give these a shot. So I've got a small one and a larger one. These take all the common size um, flints. So if you find a, a busted or whatever Bic lighter or any lighter, you should be able to get the, the flint out of them. Put them back into here. You just pull that little striker assembly out, unscrew the bottom, the spring's in there, and the flint lives inside it. So, I watched a few reviews, but one thing that, something that nobody touched on, especially when they were doing this, submerging the Bic and the clipper lighter, they were doing tests of, you know, which one's better if they get wet, etc. Now, Something that no one really touched on was because you can pull these apart. Usually, if, as you most of you would know, if, if your light is wet, generally most people just blow on it a few times to try and dry it out as best they can. Then they just run it up and down, usually on your jeans or on your legs or on something. You, you just keep rolling the, rolling the flint until it eventually goes. What I was thinking with these is what you could do is you could pull the, the striker assembly out of it, pull it right down, and you could blow every last little part of it. You could dry the flint best you can. You could blow out the, in, the internals of it, then put it together, and then give it a shot. That's not cheating. That's how these are designed, and that's how these are designed. So if this is a fixed unit and you can't pull it apart, that's what you got, that's all you got. If you can pull this apart, clean everything before you try and attempt to strike it, and then um, get this dryer beforehand, as far as I'm concerned, that's not cheating at all. That's a benefit to, that, to this type of lighter. So I'm gonna give that a shot. So yeah, anyway rambling a little bit about the lighters. Also, I got the Clipper brand um, gas. There's 
because it is for camping, survival y sort of bushcraft and stuff, you want the the clean filtered stuff, allegedly, from watching a few reviews, obviously, apparently a lot of guys, bong smokers use these things because you can hold them upside down, the flame gets really good and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but what I noticed from a few of those sort of guys were the cheaper the quality, the, the gas, the more A, these would clog up, and B, they taste crap. So I'm thinking, and they recommend that this stuff's really clean, and they recommend these lighters are the cleanest tasting lighters. So I thought, well, if you're all about dependability and things like that, surely it makes sense to use the cleaner, more reliable gas. So that's why I got this brand. And it was the same as Venti or whatever, the person at the tobacconist said that, is it Venti or? I don't know, I'm not a cigarette smoker, so I've got no idea, but they said the other the other brand was way more popular and they were the same price for the same amount of mils pretty much. So I just went with these uh, with that one. So yeah, new lighter for my kit, for my fire kit. I ordered a new ferro rod. I got a half inch by eight inch ferro rod, and I also ordered some high speed steel lathe turning tools. Um, square four square edges and i'm going to use that as my striker for my new ferro rod and for the other ferro rods that i've got here um and i believe that's all my purchases for this week so that's my first sort of bushcrafty knifey sort of purchase this year so anyway get that out of the road now the another couple of things i wanted to talk about was walking sticks Forever and ever and ever, I've been, the first thing I do when I get off into the trail is I look for a stick. And it's got lots of uses. I've been using them since I was a kid. They cost nothing if you find a stick. But what I look for when I do find a stick, this one here is, I believe it was 11 sixteenths. I believe, which is roughly about 17 mil at the top, down to half inch or 13 mil at the bottom. That's including the bar. And the reason why I sort of like this size is because that little bit of flex in them. I found when you're walking and you push on them, it's like it gives you a little bit of spring in your step. You don't think it's much, but it definitely adds up. I'm sure it adds up over a big long walk. If you go for well over an hour, I think that that little extra spring in your step, especially going up hills and that, I think it is worth its weight in gold. The other, you know, obviously you can you can come up with a whole bunch of reasons why you'd want to use a stick, whether it's for spiders webs, for sit, looking how deep a creek is or whatever. And it's just good to, whether it's a snake or whatever, you know, you can try and keep something at bay. Um, I always use a walking stick. I've tried shaving the bark down. So this stick here actually is over two years old. I found this and I just used to leave it at the, the entrance to the, the local bush track that I go to. I just had it leaning up against a tree and it stayed there for two years or so. And... Yeah, I decided to bring it home because I'm attached to it. I'm a hoarder. So, anyway, this is another walking stick that I got. Obviously, this is a bamboo, this is a bought one from a hardware store. It's a bamboo broom handle. I believe it's 1500 mils, which I don't, I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe foot or something like that and what we did is we got these um chair stoppers rubber chair stoppers and it was either 21 or 22 mil and they had these exact same size so we got them used some epoxy put one on the bottom and the one on the top i left it so it um can come on or off didn't epoxy the top one 
Now I've got a spear. This is a cold steel Bushman. They make this sort of shape. And they also make a, a Bowie style or a buoy, however you want to say it. These are just made out of a rolled flat piece of steel. They're just one piece. They've got a good temper to them. I've seen lots of people throw these, abuse these, make spears, throw them into, throw them into trees with spears hanging off the end. And I've watched them give them bend tests, tip tests, spark ferro rods. And it actually does come with a same little ferro rod, it's tiny and, you know, but it's a ferro rod. It comes with a sheath as well, just a plasticky sort of thing. These are fairly inexpensive, like all cold steels, super sharp. They're definitely, it's probably hair popping, I'd say. Um, the, the beauty, funny thing is, whatever size this stick is, 21 or 22 mils, that handle fits on there really good. And like a tomahawk handle, if you just put a few wraps onto the ground, taps onto the onto a hard surface, this thing comes, it's actually really hard to get off. Like, that's unbelievable. I haven't tapered that or anything. That's just how it comes. Inside the handle, the handle is tapered itself. And that is extremely, extremely hard to, to come off. Um, it's probably dangerous to try and pull it off, so I'd be, I'll, I'll tap that off when I want that to come off. Um, uh, I do have a tape here, so I can tell you how long that is. It's a seven and a half inch blade. Fairly impressive. Yep, seven and a half inch cutting blade. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's fairly lightweight, it's, and if you, if you weren't using it as a spear, you know, you've got a hollow handle there. I've seen lots of people modify these. They put corks in both ends of them, put little fishing kits, you know, survival kits, fire kits, whatever you want in there. I thought that um, this is quite a good little trick. You can wear your knife on your belt. Have a, have a walking stick, and in a moment's notice, you got yourself a little, little, you stay over there, bastard thing. All right, so, um, what else, what else? I watched uh, a video the other day about um, slingshots, and I thought, oh well, and how far you should pull them back, etc., etc. And my comment was, as far as I'm aware, like a bow, you bring it back to the corner of your mouth. This one here has a whisker biscuit, and it has a wing nut. It's a locally made thing in Australia. A guy up in uh, near Caboolture or somewhere, Glasshouse Mountains or something like that. And they're all made out of. It's all steel, welded up, and then it's like coated with some sort of powder coat or something. So it's very strong, very durable. Has that whisker biscuit, so you can use it just by turning the, the wing nut there. It can be a conventional slingshot. Or you flip the whisker biscuit around, you can center it, you can do a little bit of practice bit of practice in there. It's even got some little notches on the, the whisker biscuit there, so you can actually work out maybe put a little paint pen sort of mark on the side there and you can find out where your sweet spot is where to center it and then you, all you've got to do is line up those marks and you've got your whisker biscuit set up now I find this black band I've heard lots of people say the black bands are the the most powerful on that I believe it's actually a little bit really sort of too strong for me because like anything and especially any yeah everything accuracy is more important than power and I think just a little tiny bit less pull weight draw weight would allow me to have better accuracy so I, I 
I wouldn't, I'll probably end up changing these rubbers around so I can find myself a, just something that's got a nice, a nice, still good power, but it doesn't fatigue your, your wrist. You know, I'm basically putting my fingers on the edge here because of how hard it is to hold that back. If I'm just holding it like this, it's terrible. So I'm going to go lighter band, go for the accuracy. But what I have found in the last little while is how important matching your arrow to your bow, to your sling bow, how important it is. This bow here is about 35 or 37 years old. It's one of these things that we had as a kid, practice archery at school, and I was terribly hopeless with this thing. I got myself a Fred Bear compound bow last year, and straight out of the box, uh, bought some arrows for it, straight out of the box, I was shooting five inch groups, no worries at 11 yards and we went back to 17, 21, up to 27. That was our maximum range that we had. And I was grouping really well. And I was surprised that I was so crap with this bow. But then I thought, okay, maybe it's just the compound bow. It's got sights and all that sort of stuff. And that made all the difference. After a bit of, after a little shot of confidence, I came home pulled out this bow, used the nice carbon arrows that I bought for my expensive ones, these were $12.50 each, and um, thought that yeah, being lighter and all that, and being a good quality arrow, now I'm going to be going great guns with this thing. Anyway, I couldn't hit anything, even at five yards. The arrows were just going all over the shop. Couldn't hit, couldn't hit at all what I was aiming at, which I was just shooting five inch groups at 21 yards, eight to 10 inch groups at 27 yards. So I went to the archery shop, asked those guys what's going on. And they told me, and I've never heard this before, that, and I never knew about it. I heard about spine the spine, uh, how stiff this, the spine rating for arrows, but I never understood it. And basically what they told me was, because this doesn't have a whisker biscuit or an arrow, an arrow holder, effectively the, what's holding the arrow is the, the grip, the corner of the grip and the side of the shaft. They're both hard. And then when you have a stiff, a stiff spined arrow, I think this one's around 300 or, yeah, this is a 300 spine arrow. So that's very, very stiff for like a 55 to 70 pound compound bow. So allegedly what happens, and to make things worse, is it's got the solid plastic sort of flights or whatever you call those things. Now apparently what happens is when you're firing this and it's resting against this rigid handle bow corner, that rigid arrow creates, there's no flex in it, no give in it, and it just woof, bounces off the, the side here. And the, the solid plastic flights or feathers, whatever you want to call them, they don't help either. They they crash into they crash into this and then they send it in all sorts of directions. So what the guy done is he had some very small lightweight little arrows, not this one, but it was a, a 1000 spine arrow, so it's very what, flexible for the lower pound bows. It had a tiny little head like this with a, a thin shaft, I can't remember, uh, maybe a six mil shaft or something, maybe, or could even be thinner than that, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's, you guys won't be able to probably tell on there, I might even get out of the way 
like I said, he might be able to get a silhouette or something. But this shaft here is a lot narrower than this one here. And it's lighter. But anyway, the, the arrow that he had had actual proper feathers. So you get a more flexible shaft, lighter weight, and with feathers. So when the feathers make contact with this rigid handle and rigid bow, the feathers give, they fold down, push out of the way, and then they spring back out. And that, that affects the accuracy or the deflection a lot less than a solid plastic one. Plus, the, the arrow is allowed, by nature, is allowed to bend and it yaws as it's going through the air. So instead of hitting this thing and just ricocheting all over the place, now I was four or five inch groups again with this thing. So I'm thinking you put that same sort of technology, nice, light, small little arrow into one of these, it's gonna perform so much better. And then you go a lighter, a lighter, uh, just like a kiddie's bow, lighter draw weight, everything's lighter, everything's smaller, everything's more compact, same with this, make this lighter draw weight, lighter arrow, and I believe the performance is going to go up. Better accuracy, deeper penetration, because there's less friction, less stuff to move out of the way, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are more ongoing projects, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out into the, the world because I, I haven't heard of it before. So just a little thing that I've learned. So anyway, I'll wrap it up there. Surely that's long enough. And um, I'll get back to you guys soon. And everybody take care and enjoy yourself. Goodbye.